All right, so good evening. Good evening, good evening. I'm excited that you're joining me tonight. I feel kind of like I have some pep in my step. We were just saying the weather just kind of has uh, definitely vitalized and energized me. The weather, and also probably because it is Maha Shivaratri today. And I'm just going to talk about that for a moment because it's, it is, it's important and it's significant, I think, to recognize the energies of the different um, deities that we talk about in yoga because really what they represent is, is energies inside of us, right? And so the more that we kind of get familiar with their stories and their playfulness, their leela, um, the more we become aware of that energy inside of us. So Mahashivaratri happens once a year. There are many, many, there are 12. Once a month there's Shivaratri, which is a celebration of Shiva, but Maha Shivaratri happens once a year. Today is it. And we, we um, celebrate the energy of Shiva, who is, he's the creator of the world. He's, that's what he's looked at as the creator of the world. Um, and he's also the energy of fire transformation, right? And so he also, um, destroys things. He also is the energy that moves things on, that helps us um, evolve into whatever is next. And he has such a deep love. His energy is such a deep love for his creation that there's nothing he won't do for it. And I love the little stories that we get sometimes. And uh, so I'm just going to tell you a real quick one. Um, one of his stories is that there is this, um, this passage in the scriptures and in the, in the yoga scriptures and that talks about the churning of the sea and the rising up of the sweet nectar from the bottom of the sea. And one of the stories goes that at one point the sea rose up and there was, there's a demon who lives in the sea and he wanted to destroy the world. And so instead of this pot of nectar rising up, a pot of poison rose up and it was a poison so big and so strong that it could destroy the whole earth, everybody on it. And Shiva, instead of letting that happen, took that pot of poison and drank it himself so that it couldn't affect any of his creation. And he, if he fell asleep, he would die. So he had to sit up all night. And so now for Shivaraj, for Maha Shivaratri, people stay up all night and they chant to Shiva. And so the story goes that his, his followers, the people that love him, stayed up all night and kept him company and chanted until the morning came, the poison passed, and all was well. So pretty powerful. That's, that's how deep Shiva's love is for us. So... Can we love our creations like that? Can we trust that the things that we create, that we bring into this world, the things that we're drawn toward, the things that we're, we feel that we want to support, can we love them so much that we can pour everything in to them? And can we trust that they will love us back, that, that when we give all that we have, we'll get what we need in order to continue? Whatever that means, whatever kinds of transformation is for us. So... Shiva represents a lot of things. He's the liberator, so he liberates us from our past karmas. He gives us the opportunities. His energy gives us the opportunities to do things differently. And I've been talking earlier this week about the mind. So a lot of our liberation begins in the mind. How can we liberate our mind? How can we change the thoughts that we've thought forever? How can we move past the energy of that lower mind that clings so dearly to its past experiences and wants so bad to know and to be right. And how can we liberate ourselves so that we can move into that mind of the booty nature, the unknown, the possibility? How can we move into that energy, uh, that courage of following our heart into the unknown? All right, so just some things that you can think about. That Shiva energy is all about that. It's all about the liberation, the courage, the peace. And a lot of the work that we do for Shivaratri is navel work. And we're going to do a little bit of it today, but not anything crazy. But paying attention to your navel center, to your power center, doing some breath of fire, doing a few modified sun salutations, just for the heck of it, plugging into that Shiva energy, right? Just doing little things like that. There's so much freedom. There's so much liberation. There's so much juice in that because the message you're putting out to the universe is that is the energy that I want to flow through my words, my actions, my thoughts, so with that in mind, bring your palms together, close your eyes, really settle in. And see before we open if you can connect to that Shiva energy inside of you. 
We also celebrate tonight the union or reunion of Shiva and Parvati, Shiva and Shakti, the creator, and that which flows the creation. See if you can tap into that energy of you, the stillness, and then the movement, the flow, the artist that moves within the stillness. Take a breath in to tune in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Om Namo. Guru Dev Namo. Om and feel the joy, the play, the auspicious nature, the Shiva dancing for yourselves, getting a little pep in your step. And we'll move right into our next chant, Agade Name. Let's begin together three times. Ad gare name juga gare name sad gare name siri guru deve name ad gare name Juga Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name Ad Gure Name Juga Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name Pause and feel. Maybe in the stillness you can feel the vibration of the voices that have been chanting all day that will continue to chant into the night. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, honoring the energy of Shiva, honoring this creation that we experience, that we move through, that we're animated on. And inhale deeply, bring that prayer up overhead. Squeeze the navel center of the pelvic floor back and up. Reach for the stars, reach for the sun, reach for the moon. All of the above are hanging out right now. Then exhale, arms wide around. Doing the dance of Shiva, moving through your own vital energy. Fingertips touch the earth, back to that point of stillness. Mm -hmm. 
And then opening your eyes or leaving them closed, place your hands on your knees if they're not already there. And just begin to bring your chin to your chest and then let your chin rise up toward the ceiling just a few times, moving your head very slowly up and down, stretching the back of the neck and stretching the throat. And then bring your chin to center and just begin to move your head from side to side, gently and slowly, as if you were shaking your head no. Back to center, dropping your chin to your chest, right ear to right shoulder. Head back and around to the left side and just continue. Gentle, easy neck circles, beginning to wake up the energy of our sixth chakra, our truth, our purity. One of the most beautiful ways to really begin to develop a relationship with your mind is to become the guider of the mind, to slow down and to notice what the mind is thinking, and to, write, to gently back to the movement of your body, the flow of your breath. Remind it time and time again that it's a team player, that it's part of a whole, it's part of a body and a heart and a soul. So often the mind thinks that it's on its own. And it just trusts that everything else is going to fall in behind it. The mind is so very powerful. Next time your chin touches your chest, pause and begin to move in the other direction. Because really the mind, when you think about it, it does create our reality. I mean, how often have you been in a great mood? And then you remember something or the phone rings and you have a conversation with someone and all of a sudden everything sucks. And nothing has changed except the way your mind is perceiving the information that it obtained. Nothing in the physical sense has changed, but everything appears to have changed. Next time that your chin touches the chest, pause there. And bring your chin back to neutral. And then just let your shoulder blades move back toward each other. And relax the shoulders. And then slowly begin to move. Keep your head where it is, nice and still and centered. Move your right shoulder up towards your right ear. Just going slowly and moving it up, all the way up until it touches that ear. As close to it as you can get. Pause. Take a deep breath in. Exhale as slowly as you can as you let that shoulder melt back down. Slow, 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 as slow as you can. Let it relax down. And then pause for a moment. Notice where that shoulder is and notice the other shoulder. Perhaps you've created a little bit of space. One more time. Inhale that right shoulder up toward the right ear. Squeeze it up as high as you can get it. And then again, slowly down. Maybe even a little more space. Bring your attention now to your left shoulder and do the same thing. Very slowly squeezing that left shoulder up to the left ear. Pausing. Taking a nice full breath in and out, and then inhale completely. Exhale, releasing the breath slowly as the shoulder releases down. Noticing now the left and right shoulders, their alignment or misalignment. And then one more time, inhaling the left shoulder up to the ear. Squeeze. Inhale, exhale, inhale again, slowly lower. Close your eyes. 
bring your attention to the space that you've created there. I'm assuming that everybody's created at least a little space, if not a lot. Feel the energy in that space, that new space, that new, that new palette upon which you can draw, you can play, you can move. That's freedom. As we create space in our physical bodies, we let go of some of the tension and the stress. That's liberation. That's freedom. Feel it. And bring your fingers to your shoulders, thumb in the back, four fingers in the front, and begin to make circles with your elbows. Close your eyes through most of the practice today and see if you can imagine as your arms move this beautiful flame in the center of your belly. Maybe notice as you move your attention to the flame, it grows bigger and brighter. Feel it burning away any of the delusions of the mind, any worries, anything that brings you anything less than peace. Feed it to that fire. The next time that your shoulders come down, keep them there. Keep your hands where they are. Bring your elbows out to the sides and just start to twist left and then right, left and then right. Bring your breath along with you. The mind is made to filter our experiences. Our job is to install the filter. Is it a filter of worry? Is it a filter of mistrust? Is it a, a filter of lack of self-love, of doubt? Or is it a filter of peace and kindness and patience and self-worth and self-confidence? Our job is to notice, and therein lies the key to our karma, the things we came here to change. Notice what those filters are and then see if you can install new filters slowly but surely without judgment or blame or guilt or impatience. Because the noticing is the key. Everything else after that happens very naturally. Right? Noticing and the patience and perseverance to continue to replace that filter with that, what you want to see. Come to center. Let your, keep your fingers where they are. Let your shoulders, let your elbows relax down next to your body. Just close your eyes and feel. And then let your hands slide onto your heart so that both palms are resting on either side of your chest. The fingers can cross over or interlace. Bring your elbows out to the sides and then begin to twist and bring the right elbow toward the left knee any amount. Come back up, twist the other way. Opposite elbow, opposite knee. Just keep going. Enjoying the movement. Twists are a, a wonderful way to really access that third chakra energy. Using that navel energy to propel you from side to side. To remind you that there's balance, that we move left and we move right and we move up and we move down and we sleep and we wake and we eat and we digest, right? There's always two sides, two polarities to everything. We have so much at our disposal, so many opportunities to experience so many different things. We allow our minds sometimes to stop us from experiencing those things that we want to experience. Come to stillness next time you come to center and just pause and feel. Right? Because we have doubt, we, we hesitate, we think. We have to figure it out in our minds before we pull the trigger, before we act. Inhale your arms up to the sky, out into a V. Curl your fingers into your palms, thumbs up. The thumbs are going to face each other. And we're going to begin breath of fire here. This is called ego eradicator. So the thumbs are facing slightly like toward each other to start and then just kind of move them so they're slightly facing behind you right so kind of like that and begin breath of fire make sure your shoulders are not tense make sure your body is not tense 
Just those arms reaching up toward the sky, thumbs slightly behind you, navel pumping, breath moving, everything else relaxed. One minute here. ego, the amkara, that is the part of us, the part of our mind that interacts with the manas, right? that makes us kind of buy into the lower mind and forget that there's a higher mind, that there's something that will catch us if we jump. And we're just as likely or maybe even more likely to have a great time when we jump as we are to crash. Inhale deeply, stretch the arms up, move the thumbs toward each other until they touch. Hold the breath in, squeeze everything up. Exhale, hands to your knees, eyes closed, pause and feel. And we came to this world to live, to experience, to be, not to hide, not to worry, not to figure things out. With your hands on your knees, begin torso circles here. Moving from that navel center, feeling the power there. The third chakra is called Manapura, city of jewels, the jewel, the soul. The jewel is you, it's your personality, it's your vitality, it's what you bring to the world. Next time you come forward, move in the other direction. There's a quote in Kundalini Yoga that whoever controls the mind controls the universe. Come to center. And as you come to stillness, make your way onto your hands and knees. We do a little bit of balance here. So once you get situated there, just make sure that your wrists are underneath your shoulders, knees under your hips. And take a look at your fingers. Make sure they're stretched out. You really feel a firm foundation beneath you. From here, begin to bring that right arm forward as if you were reaching for someone across. Keeping those fingers nice and active, bring that left leg off the ground now, pressing the heel back toward the wall behind you, engaging that navel center, trusting it to hold you, that point in the middle, the point of stillness that allows you to extend and then from that extension, contracting everything back toward the center. Feeling yourself as one long line of energy from that heel all the way through those fingertips. Feel the energy of your chakras as you stretch and you balance, you breathe. Don't forget to breathe. And then slowly lower your knee. Bring your hand down. Do a few cat cows. And pause at center, moving to the other side, left hand comes out, reaching, engaging those fingers, being so aware of that line of energy, the energy of Shiva moving through your arm, your arm, your hands, an extension of your heart energy. And then from that place of power and strength, compassion, raise your leg off the ground. Engage that core, find your balance, find your breath. Maybe picture a lightning bolt, the energy of Shiva moving from heel to fingers, from fingers to heel. Imagine that you can direct that energy anywhere, like a laser beam. 
and instill the energy of whatever is in your heart into wherever you direct that energy. How powerful is that? We do it all the time with our words, our thoughts, our actions. Slowly now begin to bring that knee down, bring the arm down, knees nice and wide, big toes touching, now back into child's pose. In child's pose, bring your hands into prayer. And just imagine the energy of Lord Shiva sitting in front of the sea, completely blue from drinking the poison. And just imagine singing and chanting and supporting him, acknowledging what he's done out of love for you. Know that sometimes you are Shiva and sometimes you are the receiver of Shiva's gifts. When you think about what you've done in your lifetime for your loved ones, the pain that sometimes we hold in our heart for another, the company that we keep when someone's struggling. Keep breathing. And I'm just going to read a short passage from Mark Nepo's book, The Book of Awakening, and it's about the mind. It's called Consider or Enter. If you try to comprehend air before breathing it, you will die. We can only consider things so long. After a while, all the information, all the options and opinions will begin to weigh us down. After our deeper eyes have seen the situation, all the well-meaning voices telling us what we should or should not do will start to feel like strings we can't cut through. This was poor Hamlet's fate. He overthought his life away. He overconsidered which way to go until he felt stalled and oppressed by just being in the world. It's natural to be cautious and thoughtful, especially when faced with important decisions. But often the only way to know what awaits us is to live it. This brings to mind the revelation that came upon a Hindu sage centuries ago. One day, in the middle of their morning prayers, the sage suddenly rose, ushered his students away from the monastery. He rushed about them and shooed them back into life like little ducks, proclaiming, this day is to be experienced, not understood. Take another long, deep breath before rising back up into tabletop. Here, bring your knee, your right knee, into your chest, towards your chest, and then begin to make circles with that right knee. There you go. Yep. Again, engaging that core. Move the circles in the opposite direction. And then lower the knee, bringing your right knee into your chest and beginning circles on that side. Think about the power of the mind. We stop, we think, we consider instead of experiencing and if we get stuck in our thoughts, begin to move in the opposite direction then our thoughts become our reality. And for some people, that can be so tragic. Come to stillness, bring that knee to the mat. Tuck your toes, raise your hips up to the sky. Downward facing dog. Pedal your knees deeply here in downward facing dog. Really bending one knee a lot and then the other. And then let those hips really reach up to the sky as you straighten your knees. Step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Plant your left hand, center of the mat. Extend your right arm up to the sky, twisting up to the right.
Exhale your hand back down to the mat. Step your back foot forward, finding yourself in Uttanasana. Let yourself hang in ragdoll. You can grab opposite elbows or you can let your arms slong, whatever feels good. Just let it all go. Then release your hands down. Plant your left hand in the center of the mat, bending your knees slightly, right arm up to the sky, twisting up. Right-sided energy, the fire, the energy of Lord Shiva. Exhale down, both hands on the mat. Take a few de deep breaths here. And step one foot back and then the other, finding yourself back and down. We're facing dog. Again, taking that journey, bending those knees really deeply, maybe moving your hips from side to side. You can even do some hip circles here if that feels good. And then as you raise your hips high, legs straighten, stepping that left foot forward to the outside of the left hand. Firmly planting that right hand, left arm floating up, twisting to the left. So aware of that navel energy. From here, well, as, you, as you breathe here, turn that breath into breath of fire for a moment. Really fire up that navel center. <laughs> really pumping that navel. And as you return to your natural breath, hand floats down, stepping the back leg forward. Uttanasana. This time, bending your knees a lot and then bringing your arms out to the side, inhaling as you rise all the way up to stand, straightening your legs, bringing your palms up overhead as they meet, drawing them down through your heart, diving down toward the mat, bending your knees, inhaling, widen around and just keep going. The next time that you rise up, stay there. Bring your palms to your heart center. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel the earth beneath you. Feel the expansion, the extension of yourself moving into the ethers above you, your crown. Imagine yourself as the energy of Shiva. Such a fierce love for the world that you've created. Willing to go to any lengths to allow this creation to continue to blossom and bloom. Letting the poison of our minds move through us and knowing that it'll dawn and it'll be gone and there'll be space and time create something new, ingesting the poisons of our mind instead of allowing them to flow through our lives, ingesting them, looking at them with honest eyes and being willing to allow them to pass on. From here, bring your arms out to a T, palms facing up, and then begin to bring your right arm it's nice and straight all the way up to the sky so that your palm is facing open to the left. And then bring it down. And then move the other arm up and down. And just keep going. Your fingers are very active. Moving from a T to an L. <laughs> The next time that you find yourself in that T, pause. Bring both arms up overhead, interlace your fingers, stretch those palms up toward the ceiling. And then just begin to bow your upper body forward and start to swing from side to side. So your upper body is parallel with the mat and you're just swinging your arms and your upper body from side to side. And 
to continue that swaying side to side motion as you release the intertwine of your hands and just let your hands begin to flow freely and continue to lower until you start to come into a forward fold arms moving keep those arms moving as you start to rise up again slowly until you ultimately find yourself with your arms overhead dancing moving and shaking and then gradually begin to slow your speed until your arms just seem to drift down to your sides and your body comes into total stillness pause here palms facing forward at your sides Letting the energy kind of even out, feeling it start to settle into your cells. Vital energy feeding the cells of your body. Waking up that mind. Feeling a rising up your navel center, your intuition, your wisdom. Feeling everything together in the cooperation of your present reality right in this moment. Feel your power, feel your strength, feel your humanness, embrace it all. Here you're going to inhale your arms out to the side, all the way up overhead, palms together, moving through the midline of your body down to the mat. Plant your hands as you slightly bend your knees. Step your right foot back, your left to meet it. Knees to the mat, nice and wide, big toes together, finding yourself in child's pose. Letting yourself rest there. Noticing the thoughts that rise up. Are you here now with the rest of us? Are you thinking about what you're going to do after? Where's your mind? Just notice. Lead it back to where you want it to be. Become the guider of the mind not the slave to the mind. The most powerful tool is self-knowledge. Knowing where the mind goes when it wanders, noticing. Knowing what our human weaknesses are. Knowing the things that we need to work on. And just as importantly, knowing our strengths and the things that we offer so easily to the world. So often the mind takes us away from those moments of self-knowledge. It distracts us. It leads us into so many stories. It's responsible for all of our troubles and all of our successes. Some of them happen, some of them don't, but they all feel like they do. Slowly bring yourself up to a seat. Once you get there, get nice and comfortable. You can put a blanket under your seat if you'd like. You're going to take your right hand, place it out in front of you, palm down. Your left hand, you're going to bend your elbow, bend the fingertips of the left hand. You're going to rest that right under your third eye, center of the forehead. Your thumb is going to be pointed straight up. Right? Eyes are going to be closed, and you're going to begin to pump your navel. Now, you have two choices here. You can pump it with breath of fire, or you can inhale deeply. Spend the breath and just pump your navel until you can't hold anymore. Exhale, inhale, and continue to do that. So those are your two choices. You want the navel pumping, either one of those 
ways is perfect. Begin. This is a meditation to command the command center of the glandular system. It's called self-knowledge. Cleans out the subconscious mind as you pump that navel. Your thumb pointing straight up, connecting with the energy of the heavens. Feel your whole body shake at the power of your navel movement. Cleaning out the subconscious mind. Right, the trash bin where everything goes, all those thoughts. We let the trash bin in our house fill up and we don't empty it. It starts to stink and we say our house stinks. But that's not true. Our house doesn't stink. Our trash bin stinks. All we have to do is empty the trash bin. The same thing in our mind. 20 more seconds. We don't empty our subconscious, then our attitude stinks, our outlook on life stinks. Whatever's in that garbage bin overflows. Inhale deeply. Keep your arms where they are. Squeeze everything up. Hold, hold, hold. Keep your arms where they are. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Squeeze everything as hard as you can. That extended arm, let it become like a, like a rock, just like straight out a piece of steel, extending. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale everything down, eyes closed, pause and feel. Opening your eyes, you're going to bring both hands out, palms up. Your elbows can rest against your ribs. You're going to let yourself move back slightly as if you were going to fall back, just slightly. Eyes are going to be closed. And again, you're going to pump that navel either way. You can either do it with breath of fire or you can inhale and just begin to pump that navel. But you want your mouth to be slightly open, your jaw relaxed. And just keep going. Offering up the energy of the subconscious mind, giving the universe permission to permeate our thoughts, our beliefs, to dilute them, to rearrange them. Trusting the divine, the universe, the Shiva energy, to change things up a little bit, to give us the opportunity to experience this moment instead of consider it, like that reading said, Life is to be experienced, not to be lived in our minds. I'm guilty of that sometimes. I spend so much time trying to figure something out instead of just doing it. Little things like, like where, to, where to go for a walk. I could sit long enough that it's too late to go for a walk. I mean, my husband do it all the time. Not so much anymore, but we used to do it all the time with TV programs. What to watch together. Right, we spent two hours trying to figure it out and then there wasn't any time to watch anything. We do that for all kinds of things. 20 more seconds, pump, pump, pump. Come to stillness, inhale, squeeze everything. Squeeze, 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 bring those elbows into the ribs. Squeeze that navel center, that pelvic floor up. Exhale, hands to your knees, eyes closed, feel. Our last exercise of this meditation set is probably the most important thing that we can do to Remind our mind that it's on our side and it, it's love it, it's hug it, it's be with it. So you're just going to simply extend your arms out to the side. With each breath, you're going to give yourself a hug, extend back out, cross the arms the other way and just keep going. The most important ingredient in self-knowledge self is self-love. 
to know how absolutely awesomely amazing you are, to know how valuable you are. That's true self-knowledge. That's your truth. Why? Because you are you. There's no other prerequisites. There's nothing you have to change to be worthy of love. To know that you are love. To know that you are loved. The mind will argue against that for sure sometimes. Don't let your mind get away with it. A few more times. And give yourself the biggest squeeze ever as you pull everything in. Squeeze everything up. Hold that breath. Exhale. Completely relax everything down. Make your way to your back. Once you get there, your arms will be at your sides, your legs will be out long. Move your legs a little bit away from each other. Not a full V, but a little away from each other. Move your arms a little bit away from your body. Put your palms face down. And just start to roll your body gently from side to side. Just this little rocking motion. Just rocking your body from side to side. And then as you come to stillness, bring your arms overhead on the floor overhead in a wide V. Bring your legs into a nice wide V. Just imagine yourself, eyes closed, imagine yourself lying in the middle of a field. Beautiful blue sky above, sun shining down on you. Just begin to feel the nature around you, feel the silence around you. With each breath, feel yourself begin to merge into the energy of that bright, vast, open sky. Move your attention to your mind. Imagine your mind is energy hovering right in the center of your brain, of your, of your head. Bring your focus there. Feel that energy kind of heavy and contained. And then imagine that energy beginning to turn a beautiful blue color, a violet color with threads of white moving through it. Imagine it beginning to slowly churn like a whirlpool or a very slow-moving tornado. Begin to watch as all the thoughts, the beliefs of the mind begin to kind of move around in this funnel as the funnel reaches up through the crown of the head and exits the crown of the head, still connected but growing, getting bigger and bigger as it moves, as it spirals up toward the heavens. And as it does, feel all those thoughts, all those beliefs still there, but not alone. Feel them become diluted with the energy of so much more possibility. Feel your mind expand the possibility of what you can see and know and believe about anyone or anything about your life, expanding, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, merging with the energies of the heavens. Feel your entire physical body growing, expanding as your energy moves beyond the confines of your skin. Just feel yourselves as vast as the sky. Just hang here for a moment, feeling the freedom, feeling the moksha, the liberation. The energy of the sun of Shiva shining on you. It's the Shakti energy, the energy of property moves through you. Endless possibility for creation, 
the joy for being. And then imagine that funnel beginning to slowly move back, getting smaller and smaller until it makes its way into the confines of your head. But notice that it still feels so light and so open and that connection to the crown, the connection moving through to the heavens still remains. Bring that with you into your every day. Slowly slide your arms back to your sides, bring your legs closer together, bend your knees, plant them very close to your butt. Inhale your arms up overhead as your hips lift up and then down, flowing bridge. Making sure that your heart is moving toward your chin, that your chin is not scrunched up towards your heart. The next time that you come up, stay up. Engage that core to keep those hips up there. You can leave your arms overhead or you can interlace them underneath. If you would like, you'll come into robot arms and you're just going to lift your right leg up off the floor as you press into your left foot. Do a few circles with your ankle. Bend your knee and exhale back down. And then you're going to switch sides, left leg comes up, or is it right, right? Yeah, let those ankles circle and move. And coming back on down, lowering your hips, bringing your knees into your chest, rock from side to side. Bring your arms out to a T, do some flowing spinal twists. Letting your knees move in one direction, pausing for a breath, and then moving to the other, going from side to side. Letting your movement, your body movement, speak to the vastness and the freedom, the liberation, the possibilities, the enlightenment. And at the essence of Lord Shiva, Shiva liter literally means to enlighten bring light to any situation. This fire created this world. His love sustained the world. Come back to center. Inhale your knees back into your chest as you wrap your arms around your knees. Squeeze your nose up towards your knees. And then relaxing your head down, reach in for your insteps, coming into happy baby pose. Be still or rock from side to side. And releasing your hands down to your sides, shoot those feet up to the sky. Slowly begin to lower your left leg as your right leg stays where it is, engaging that core. And then switching sides. One leg comes up as the other goes down and continue to move that way a few times. You can place your hands underneath your lower back if you'd like, or just keep them at your sides. Using your core to support you as you move this energy. And inhale both legs up to the sky. Reach your hands behind each thigh. Pull those legs in a little bit towards your head. You can move, you can slide your hands up your shins. And just pull your toes towards your third eye a little bit. And then bend your knees, release your legs down to the floor. Take a few windshield wipers from side to side, legs nice and wide. And then when you're ready, you can find stillness, extend everything out, relax into Shavasana.
put all my conditioning aside for one glorious instant and slide through the eye of the needle, threading it with light. On the other side, there is no portal for return, so I don't even think about that. Cutting the cord, I dance as I never dared in that other world. Dance as if I am loosened from gravity and delivered into the arms of jubilation. Reveling, merging, spiraling, inward or out, down or up, alive and wild, I am freed, even from what I believed freedom would be. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Find movement in your body in whatever way you are drawn to. Stretch and circle and twist. Waking yourself up. And then letting your hands and the soles of your feet move toward each other. Rub, connecting with that fire of Shiva. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. And then as you descend into stillness, bringing your knees into your chest, you can rock up and down on your spine, or roll to the right. Find yourself seated, Anjali Mudra, really being aware of your thumbs centered, in your heart space. Pause for a moment, revisit that vastness, vast as the sky and beyond. That's who you are. Feel the energy of Shiva rising up. Om Namah Shivaya. Bowing to the energy of Shiva inside of you. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surrounds you. And the pure light within you guides your way on. Let's join me in sealing our practice together with a long sat nam. Inhale deeply. So Letting your thumbs float to the space between your bow, brow, <laughs> dropping your chin into your own amazing grace. Be loved, believe, be true to you. Satnam, everyone.